Hey everybody, I've gotten so many requests to explain how I set up and use the Ioptron Star Tracker, so without further ado, here it is. What I love about the Ioptron is how relatively compact it is, especially for traveling versus a lot of other star trackers on the market. With that being said, my Ioptron is not the most solid and stable star tracker, so using large heavy telephoto lenses for deep space photography does not render the best results. But for what I use it for, which is mostly landscape photography with my wide angle lenses and even my 50 millimeter prime lens, it works great. So let me show you how I set it up and a couple modifications I did. First, remove your tripod head and screw in the tracker. Use a sandbag or a camera bag to weigh down your tripod. Next, you would take off the camera mounting block, but for this part, I actually made a modification here. The two thumb screws were originally intended to screw on and off so you could pull this plate off, attach the ball head, and then reattach it back to the Ioptron. It wasn't the greatest design because over time the weight of the lens and my camera would loosen the screws and my camera would start to slip out of position and almost fall off. I decided to replace the thumb screws with some bolts that I leave permanently attached. Now all I have to do is simply screw in the ball head without disassembling the plate like so. Next, set your Ioptron for northern or southern hemisphere depending where you are and put the tracking speed on 1x. You want to level out your tripod and the Ioptron. Use the compass on the Ioptron to find which way is north and face the Ioptron in that direction. Locate Polaris aka the North Star in the sky. The simple way to do this is by using two stars in the Big Dipper to create a virtual line that points to Polaris. Also, make sure you download the Ioptron Polar Scope app so you know where to position Polaris on the scope since the North Star is just slightly off from the Earth's axis. Now before I insert the scope, I like to look through the hole where the scope would go and position the Ioptron so it's facing Polaris. Then I insert the scope and turn on the Ioptron so I could accurately position the scope and do any fine tuning that I need to. Now this is the trickiest part that people can get confused. Uh, they don't know if they're looking at Polaris or some other star. The most helpful tool that I use to confirm that I am looking at the right star is a green laser pointer. I shine the laser pointer at the North Star and then I look into the scope. If the laser pointer is on the same star that is in the scope, then I know I've found the correct star. If not, then I'll use the laser as a guide to adjust the Ioptron until it is the correct star. When you have Polaris positioned accurately, you want to make sure everything's securely locked into place. Now one of the problems with my Ioptron is that even with everything locked, I still have to gently put my camera onto the ball head. This may knock Polaris out of alignment a little bit, and uh, I could either look through the scope and kind of readjust um, into the correct spot, but if you're slightly off alignment, don't stress about it. When shooting with wide angle and medium telephoto lenses, it'll still track for a couple minutes, even if it's not 100% in alignment. Now, the longer the focal length, the shorter amount of time you'll be able to track stars before they start blurring on you. So if you want to do deep space uh, photography, I suggest getting a larger and sturdier star tracker. And uh, for landscape photography though, I highly recommend the Ioptron. And I think they actually made an updated version now, but uh, I believe it's the Ioptron Pro and it's slightly bigger, probably more to compete with the Skywatcher. Um, so I, would, I think that's more for if you want to do deep space photography. Now, going back to you know this Ioptron, basically what I do is I like to take a picture of the foreground first, and then I'll turn on the Ioptron and take my you know, exposure of the sky second. Uh, it doesn't matter, vice versa, I can do the sky first and then the foreground second, but I'll blend those two images, and that way I get a clean sky with a clean foreground. So that about wraps it up. Thank you guys for watching and for all the support. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments, please leave them below. I try to get to everybody. And you know, I love it when people make recommendations of what they want to see. And I also like to hear alternate methods. You know, the great thing about photography is there's more than one way to do something usually. So if you have an easier way of setting up your star tracker, by all means, leave it in the comments below. 
and um, I'll pin it up there for other people to check out. It's all about sharing ideas and that's uh, basically what I want this channel to be. So thank you guys for contributing and take it easy.